Well, there's a conversation now we don't go in this afternoon. And basically, it's about um, what the NDC is doing. It's about elections. And it's about um, how we can also get involved in the political party process. We know the NDC, they started off with um, activities of electing their leaders from the branches and then they got to the regional, no, they got to the constituency regional and then uh, they now are going national. At the end of the day, they ultimately, before the close of December, would have to elect a flag bearer to take them through the campaign season from 2019 up to 2020. There's an initiative that is started by somebody who has um, uh, an experience of being a lecturer, a uh, political scientist, as well as speaks the subject of uh, not only elections but politics and also media. And he's starting a campaign dialogue series. It's been convened by no other than um, my own good friend, younger brother, Dr. Eche Sikanku. Dr. Sikanku is here. Good morning to you. Good morning, bro. And uh, it's, it's good to speak to you. You, you call it the Campaign Dialogue Series. Yes. Uh, an, an interesting name. Thank you. Um, is it what is practiced in the best um, democracies, America, the UK, where they have uh, primaries of the major parties mm -hmm. and um, the political watchers, mm -hmm. those who do publications take interest? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Roland. It, it is. Um, in other advanced democracies, um, there is the belief that civic education, public participation, political education are really important in entrenching and solidifying democratic practice. And so because of that, throughout the political process, there are events and things that are done to raise awareness and to also scrutinize the people who put themselves up to be elected as president. So, you know, I looked there and I said, well, why is it that in our part of the world, people, it's during election season that people tend to get really elected? But presidential primaries are one of the key pillars or cornerstones of our democracy because the people who are elected through this primary process might end up becoming president. And why is that important? People think politics is far off, but then it affects our lives because the policies that they make, whether it's about food safety, whether it's about health care, whether it's about educational quality and access, is our lives are going to be fundamentally dependent on whoever leads us or becomes president. Even when they're not the party in power, why should we take an interest? Because the potential for the leader of the NDC to become president in 2020 is equal. It could, be, it could go other ways. And so whoever is elected as flag bearer could end up becoming president and could then affect our lives. Because in 2020, President Anayi Kufuadu, if he decides to go, is going to go against somebody in the NDC. And so that is why they have come up with their timetable to elect a flag bearer. You notice that when the MPP are in opposition to, they elect the flag bearer early. And then the NDC and opposition do it too, yeah, earlier. So that is the importance of it. And so you, the, 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 the key thing is that the political parties help to entrench democracy through the processes they go through to elect their leaders. You've come a long way from the days of uh, uh, the Swedish de Declaration, where there was a coronation of a presidential candidate. Party reform has become a key characteristic of Ghana's democracy. Just a couple of years ago, people came from Kenya, from Southern Africa, remember, to study our political party reforms. It started with the NPP, when they had the uh, expansion of the uh, electoral college. Then the NDC also had their own reforms. So the point is that political parties and the political primary process are so fundamental because that is the basics of democracy. Okay, and so the whole idea of the campaign dialogue series is to generate awareness, is to help to keep the public informed, as well as have comprehensive, critical, and concisive conversations about a process that is going to be so key to the future of our country. Mm. Uh, well, uh, we're going to talk about that very soon in terms of um, the personalities who will be talking at the event in itself. Mm. But um, how does that help shape the political dynamics mm. of not only the NDC, but also the whole political party process? of both the MPP, the other political parties, the PPP, etc. Right. Yeah, great question. So I'm going to say about three or four factors, okay, how that is going to entrench the party culture in Ghana. Uh, and I would link that to the importance of presidential primaries. One, it helps to engender grassroots democracy. 
Because you remember in 08 and 2012, all of us were following what was happening in the U.S., Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton. Yeah, yeah you we, were even, yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I was there reporting for some yes, of the Ghanaian yes, radio yes, stations, yes. you know, because the interest was so high. And that process began during the primaries. It didn't even, before even Obama met McCain or whatever, when he was meeting Clinton and all of that. That is the primaries. And it's so beautiful because it helps to, my first point is that it helps to enhance grassroots democracy. How does that happen? Because the people at the grassroots are given an opportunity to air their views. So as the, as the candidates go to Volta, go to the North, I mean, you've been reading in the news, uh, Joshua Labi was in the North, uh, um, John Mahama will be traveling, and on and on and on. Um, Echo Spiel Gabra has been going around. So they are meeting the delegates, they are meeting the constituents, they are meeting the people at the grassroots. This is their chance for the people at the grassroots to air their views. And we've been hearing it, especially after the report, the Kwesi Bocho report. They feel that the party has neglected their concerns. They were concerned about loyalties within the party and on and on and on. So it enhances grassroots democracy because it gives a voice to the people at the basis to participate in shaping the future of the party by airing their views or their concerns on the issues that they care about most. Two, it helps to shape the policy agenda of the candidate. Mm. How does that happen? When the candidates go on the ground and they are talking to their constituents and other people, they get to hear what is important to them. For instance, there is a, a, the collapse of a bridge, or in our place, we've never had a hospital, or in our place, we've never had a school, or something like that. So the, the, the key concerns of the people, okay, the very key concerns, you know, we've never had um, a good center uh, for healthcare delivery or whatever. Every constituency, as a major issue that they care about and it differs. So this is the chance mm. for the candidates to hear about those issues. And then it helps to shape the agendas. The, the way our political party activities are and the conversations around party politics in our country um, intertwine with our sociocultural uh, nuances in which uh, we're tagging one from this ethnic group, this uh, person, this analyst is uh, pro MPP, pro NDC, you're, you're not worried that you could also be seen in that light, that you're starting with NDC, so it means that uh, you're full NDC or, you, you know, the way we taint, we tend to taint issues. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fair concern. I, I should think about that. And uh, it shouldn't have been a problem because, you see, the fact of the matter is that, uh, apart from everything, I'm, I'm a lecturer, I'm an, an analyst, and so I, I don't determine my data source. My data source now is the NDC because it is the NDC which is going through the primary season. Mm. And you follow the kind of work that I've done. I yes. did the same, you know, for the even NDC. for American elections. Even you did for some, yeah. you, 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 put, you you did a, a great publication. I read very very instructive <laughs> yeah. on Barack Obama. Yeah, but thanks. So so there is. I have no allegiance. Okay. Um, I take the subject matter, or the data that is available, and you're just I, a professional I, doing your work. Yes, just doing. Who also work. wants to influence the dynamics. And no, to help conversation. With, to help enhance the public conversation. Okay, and I will do the same when it gets to All the right. NPP. But uh, and, and and it's good that this is happening at a time that well maybe the Ekufa Adole government is also having all these issues with the economy, trying to allay fears and all that. Mm -hmm. But you look at the players or the the individuals who are contesting for those um, positions uh, so in the NDC. Mm -hmm. They're going to have the national executive elections. Correct. And then we have the main primaries for the election of a flag bearer. True. How, how do you draw the dichotomy between who should occupy what or have been elected to occupy those positions up to national elect and what perhaps the linkages are as to who is a pro Guzi, a pro Mahama, a pro Sylvester Mensa, etc. And how do we have those dynamics at play? Right. Um, I think for a lot of people who will be observing how these uh, national executive elections will play out, They'll be looking, at, for me, I mean, let's not uh, uh, sketch the issues or dodge it. I think the major thing that we are going to be looking at is the JM factor, the John Mahama factor. Because, uh, of course, he's indicated that he wants to come back. Uh, and so it's, it's I mean, he's the pro what I call the prohibitive front runner or the prohibitive favorite at this point, you know, just because of his stature and all of that. So I think where people are going to be looking out for is just like it happened at the branch and the constituency stage, who are going to be looking at how much of a hold does JM still have on the party and is there a challenger who can mount a very serious and credible challenge uh, for him. So they'll be looking at which candidates are in the JM lane and then they'll be looking at 
how they perform at the constituency level. I think it was it was split at 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 um, at the constituency and the regional levels uh, because some of DM candidates got through. Some also lost their position. It was kind of split. So it 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 it, it gives us an indication. Uh, that in as much as um, the former president is a very popular figure within the party, um, it could go any, it could go anyway, you know, because um, if there happens to be a certain test or quest for change, uh, then it means that other candidates will be able to make a headway. So looking at the national elections, we have um, Honorable Danad Budakbi, um, Hudu Yaya, I believe, and other people contesting for the chairman position general secretary said you are going against um uh, uh what's his name Koko Anido Koko Anido. as, a, as yeah. a main front runner yes. yes 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 so we'll be looking at that and you know the relationship between uh Koko Anido Ho and gm and his allegiance to males and then he said you can see J and those dynamics yes 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 okay. so i think that's where we'll be uh, so at. so who are going to help you do the discussions then or who are going to be the main uh, speakers at this event. Yes, yeah, so um, the speakers, uh, a little bit before I get to that, so today's event is not focusing on the national executive elections, though. Okay, great. It's on the pr presidential candidates. Ah, okay. Yeah, presidential candidates. Just their activities, who they are, their personality, yes. what they bring on board. Thank you. Okay. So their personalities, their policies, and then the process. Okay. PPP. Mm -hmm. Not the not Indus PPP though. Yeah, yeah, but 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 today's event. So um, because I want the focus to remain on the issues and for us to help build our base, the, the fundamentals of our democracy. I'm bringing people who are experts in political communication, political strategy, political science, or people who are veterans in reporting politics. And we know Paul Admochi is a veteran political reporter. He's covered so many elections when it comes to the political history of this country. I think he's very much educated, well versed in that. So he would come, and I, I've listened to him before. He's talked about some of the candidates. For instance, Guzita not entering the race. How does that affect the chances of JM or the other parties? That kind of stuff. So he will come there and do that. Um, Dr. Kobe Mensa, excellent. Uh, Political marketer. Yes, uh, yes. Lecturer um, has, yeah. Yeah, so he'll come and do that. And he taught me at University of Ghana Business School. He's good. Oh, yeah. he did. Mm. Yeah, so, so you can attest, you can attest to yeah, that yeah, for, yeah. for our good. audience. He's good. He's good. Exactly. He's good. Yeah. So Kobe will come and talk about how they're marketing themselves, what they should be doing, the messaging, you see. Uh -huh. And then we'll have uh, Franklin Kuju, who, of course, we know is an, a public intellectual. Right, so he's been contributing to the public space, and then lastly, we have Professor Jampo, um, and yeah, an academic yeah, in his yeah. own right as well. Okay, so, so Professor Jampo, we have Franklin Kujo, we yeah. have Paul Adomotri, yeah. and then we have Dr. Kobe Mensa. That's right. Well, great, great time. What, ta what time is the event, and where? So, the event is at 1 30 p.m. this afternoon at the Ghana International Press Center, the GGA Press Center mm. opposite GIJ. So, um, I think uh, let's have a very open, a very lively. Um, a very civil conversation um, to help grow the fundamentals, not of the economy, but of, the, of, of our democracy, which of course includes the economy. Okay. But to grow the I, is it life anywhere? Yes. Um, thankfully, there are a number of media housing institutions who recognize the importance of political education. So, um, of course, your station, Multimedia, um, has provided the opportunity to kind of publicize this. But then there's also Class 91.3 FM, which is going to be carrying this live. Uh, they've committed some resources to that. Um, and a couple of other media houses uh, will be there as well, doing, um, throwing more light on this and to help educate the public. Well, thank you very much as well. Uh, it's been a great conversation. 1.30 p.m. it is. That's right. And um, the press center. The press center. Right. Yeah. Well, Accra International uh, Press Center. Ghana International Press Center. Okay, Ghana yeah. International Press Center. Um, Dr. Echisikanku joining us. Uh, it's about the dialogue series. And uh, please make sure that um, you join us for some conversations after the event in itself. We're following through how the primaries uh, will shape up ultimately for the NDC as well. I'm sure that event also we're going to cover live on the day. But we've been speaking to a number of the personalities. Dr. Ecospio Gabra was right in the studio. Uh, Sylvester Menza, a couple of others as well. But, so please make sure you keep the conversation ongoing. Uh, get interactive Facebook journeys on TV. Uh, let us know also what you think as you give us more of your... Uh, your, your messages on our Twitter handle and as, as always you can watch us regularly on the channel my joy online TV on YouTube 
Well, right now we have to take a break. When we come back, uh, we're talking many things um, that are, uh, are shaping societies and we're building up to the whole conversation up the, about the joint use Western properties, Habitat Fair, and it's starting just tomorrow. 2018 uh, event comes off uh, from tomorrow up to the close of the weekend. We'll be hosting some exhibitors participating right here.